if your programs crash and won't reopen. That oh, yeah, and w- when it changes how many people are on every week, which is part of the do. So yeah. it is, but that's why I'm going to rotating cast of assholes. That's right. Well, that's why when I do when I when I actually go to redo all this one, I am just going to capture the whole Discord camera list. That's fair. And also, uh, Wes, with, with that, uh, I'm gonna. Hi, Crispy. <laughs> What's up, Crispy? Crispy. Um, we. I do definitely want to. Uh, <laughs> like how a uh, critical role starts with a uh, bunch of nerdy ass voice actors, all that. Uh-huh. Like it was our ro- rotating cast of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's our intro line. The Trogan name. <laughs> I like it. With a rotating cast of assholes. Yep. Oh, let me get. This. All right, all righty. <laughs> let's see how my accent's gonna be today. <laughs> Not good, it, me thinks. It changes depending on what day we're in. <laughs> He's. We're he, we're just saying he's European, not any one particular country, just somewhere in that area. <laughs> just throw me in there. It's like a ball hey. pit of accents. Better than any accent I can do. Dave does a sick Canadian. I'll give him that. Yeah, do pretty good up uh, for them. The Great White North theory. I can do that pretty good, yeah. Derry. Um, this <laughs> change for a second. So I. Change your Discord. Promises, promises. Yeah. All right. Mr. Bear? Can you hear me? They call yeah. me Mr. Pig. Like, I was totally going Brother Bear there, eh? I know. And I went back to the show I know a lot I, better. A I King. spy something. Green. <laughs> okay, yeah. There we go. There we go. Everyone's in place. Is something tall? Uh, is it? Is it a treat? How do you total a mammoth, eh? Trample off it. You'll never change. You knob. <laughs> Can't believe they got that in a kids movie. <laughs> Only because they, you it, don't it, know it just, what a knob is, there, eh? Is it? Yeah, it, it just shows that they don't care if it, as long as it's not in English, they don't care what they put into movies. It's true, Derry. Bunny shark. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. What did we do last week? So. Much and not before. Uh, I got violated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got yeah, violated. Pretty, pretty much, uh, you spent the entire day fucking off and uh, putting off your mission, which is fine. We needed Good to time. recharge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just got I mean, I feel like blowing a place up, so I mean... I mean, I feel like you're low. better off the day before you drink than the day after you drink. I won. <laughs> at least at least then your, your pain is only internalized. The real trick is just to get past that whole shame thing, then it's fine. I have no shame. I have no shame left. Oh, Mr. Barvik. I, I do, Barvick. however, have a few bruises from the whole fall. <laughs> I mean, I. It's not my fault. <laughs> The good news is that I don't own that particular shop, so... Yes, but you still need to pick up your axe. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. So... Go get that. I will get our train tickets. See, here's the thing. You guys had your long rest, correct? Yes. Yes? But you went for your long rest at, like, 3 p.m. It's, so it's now midnight. Nothing's open. <laughs> you got all night that you gotta well, find something to do. It sounds like it's time to get back to the sauce. Um. Pass. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no. I mean, you're welcome to <laughs> just RP our way out of it and kick it to morning, but currently it's, yeah, it's about midnight, 1 a.m. I want to grab a glass of water and go lay back down. 
Well, I mean, you can head there, but the trains aren't running, and uh, Barbic doesn't have an axe. Do you really need one? Go down to the bar, and I'm going to try to sneak some uh, drink uh, away without, you know, being noticed by anybody who's probably going to say I've had too much. And you see a boomerang whizzing through the air right above your head. I was going to say, roll your uh, sleight of hand. (laughs) (laughs) With with a boomerang coming to your head, we're going to say it's with disadvantage. And, well, actually, actually. Uh, let, before so you see, you hold on off on your side of hand, Koopo. You go ahead and uh, roll your attack. Okay. <laughs> that would be a sixteen. What? What's your What's your AC there, Barvik? Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. So it it misses, but it's close enough that you like see it coming. You duck your head a little bit. Now you have to do your uh, sleight of hand disadvantage because you're a mid. I am uh, really getting irritated with this individual. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm 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 officially not on speaking terms with the Koopa. With the Koopa. Koopa Khan. Mm-hmm. Got I got a violated and attacked within like a six hour run. The, you the, threw a I, bench at me. Because you stuck your <laughs> finger where your finger didn't belong. Even if it was a magical finger, you still violated me. You deserve the bench to the face. I'm going to say technically it was a magic hand. So Yeah, well, consent, right? We're still talking consent, and there was none. So, no. I'm not the one that shit and puked over the roof <laughs> of the weapon shop. That was an accident. I can explain. There I were reasons... Your ass. <laughs> When you were sick, and I met, mopped up your puke too, so I think you get a boomerang to the face. Yeah, well, you missed. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, my sleight of hand was uh, a two. And let's see, sleight of hand. <laughs> I bet this is a minus. Hold on, hold on. We got to <laughs> we got to make this right. That's what I thought. Sleight of hand. Oh no, plus one. So that's three. That's a three. Well, see, unfortunately for you, uh, Jesse is behind the bar tonight. And as you're reaching for the the bottle or glass or whatever you're reaching for, you you oh. you, you, you turn your head to see the boomerang go by, and you look back, and she's placed a knife right between two of your little toes. Not enough to hurt you, but enough to scare the shite out of you. And she said, you're done. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Are you pulling your hand? Are you pulling your hand away, or are you just leaving it there? <laughs> oh no, I pull it back. I'll just find something. I'm just gonna look at her. What? What do you sober people do then? Fine. What do you want me to do? Um, Whatever you like, just not as as long as it destroys the bar. Wax your shell, turtle. Time I waxed it, I got puke all over it. I don't know if that's a good idea. I mean, I'm a cat. I'll just nap until morning. So <laughs> I'm laying back Again. down. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's on the bar. And I'll lie down. <laughs> I'm going to like really like, I'm just going to sit down and just like. <laughs> All right, everybody else uh, gonna just rest the night away then? Yeah. All right, cool. <sighs> well, in that case, since you took an extra long rest, none of you guys are gonna be uh, exhausted today from the drunk. So, well done, well played. <laughs> Feeling rather spry. Well, you sleep for sixteen hours. That'll happen. Uh... <laughs> I did that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you, you wake up in the morning feeling pretty good considering uh, you drank half a bar last night. Um, and you are uh, ready to, or just need to re- get ready to take care of your second bombing mission now. Going after Mako Reactor number five. I'm going to go get my axe. All righty. 
<laughs> as you walk into the uh, weapon shop, you, you, you just kind of sense that, that something's not right. Uh oh. He's what's the what's too. what's the barkeep or the uh, shop owner's name? Um, we're gonna say it's, you... I'm gonna go with Mitch. Mitch, <laughs> Mitch. So funny thing. Uh, um, yeah, it wasn't me. Fault. Um, words. <sighs> Sorry. You realize that I had to close yesterday because I couldn't get people to walk past the smell to get into my damn shop. And then I had to go on the roof and clean up the mess. And it still does not smell good in here. To be fair, that wasn't my fault nor my idea. And I fell from the top down. I'm pretty sure that you're the one that was up there making the mess. You're the one that got too drunk, so you were up there making the mess. Sounds like a whole lot of your fault. I mean, I almost realistically, there was there was a whirlwind <laughs> and a, some magic. I was violated. It was horrible. I'm going to need some therapy. Maybe a bottle. I'm not sure. Let's just agree that bad things happen to lots of people and it's all going to be okay. Well, while your uh, anguish does make it hit a little less hard on me, I'm still not very happy with you. Take your axe and get out of my shop. You're a saint as always. As, as you walk out, as you're walking out of the shop, he he literally just keeps alternating between staring daggers and actively trying to avoid looking at you. What a guy! And as you walk out of the shop, you do notice there's still a pretty solid smell there. Someone should do something about that. That 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 that's bad. I I have checked my spells three times, and I do not have any way to deal with smell. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it it just kind of smell like next door container in lab. Still can, but Koopa's not going to. <laughs> That's so nice of you. <clears throat> All right, you have collected your axe, Barvik. Oh, All you guys really is what well, you just have to get prepared for your mission. Anything you want to do before uh, you uh, are ready to head off? What's the buff to my axe? You never did tell me what all that money bought me. All that money? Yeah, it was a lot. Not it, really. It was like six hundred gil. Yeah, no, it, you, no, it, it was the, like three hundred. The, the bonus was like a hundred and fifty. Everything else was just to get the axe taken care of. Anyway, I, I gave him two hundred gil for that upgrade, so it had better be good. It makes it plus one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you move eighty feet per second slower. That's it. <laughs> I'm joking. It does. Uh, pl- it gives you a plus two on attack rolls. Okay. Okay. Excellent. But I, I think we prepped. I think we prepped before the drinking contest. I believe you guys did. We, we, you we got we all were, your gear and all that. Because I uh... yeah, we were we were killing time before the axe, and we went overboard. <laughs> you went shopping spree. That's right, and then. And then all hell broke loose. Yeah, because I bought four potions of healing. I bought the iron bangle. Yes. They bought materia. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh. And we'll talk about this later. Never mind. <laughs> all right. Um, well, then it's uh, probably time to uh, meet up with uh, Jesse Biggs and Wedge and get your uh, mission briefing. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Your mission, your mission, you've already chosen to accept. <laughs> I mean, this we've already done one. We may as well go for a full house and for a dime and for a dollar, right? <laughs> All right. So as you... makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I blow up things on company time. 
<laughs> I mean, it still has the same intended effect also. <laughs> All right. With that, so you you head back to the uh, bar area of the <clears throat> uh, Seventh Heaven. And being 8, 9 in the morning, it's empty. Not even open yet. But luckily, you live there, most of you. Or all of you at this point. I don't remember anymore. Whoop. Mr. Carl, the stream, you got a thing up for you got, audio You device. got to switch DVI audio. Or do not switch DVI audio. Oh god, that shot up real loud. Oh, I got a so, nine. Yeah, and you actually, you absolutely see him starting to sneak over. Mostly because as soon as he does, the first step he takes is on a board that literally just kind of glances over at you. Okay, I don't, I do nothing. <laughs> yeah, with the with the six, you were not taking it anywhere near that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, pay no attention. Nothing going on Mr. over here. Mr. Barvik, I, I happen to know someone that can turn your shell into a brewery. I, I, can, I can help you make this happen. But let's blow up reactor first. I see. My liver won't thank you, but I will. Yeah, they grow back. We, we can replace that as well. Sure. I know a guy. Anyways, Jesse, how how are we blowing up this thing? Well, b before Jesse's even able to talk, you just kind of uh, you glance over and see Wedge just thinking, tilts his head the other side, just kind of thinking. Like, would that be like fish flavored ale? Like, what the hell would happen with that? It, more like, more like, um, salmonella, more likely. <laughs> It, I think it'll it have would, more milky highlights. It would be turtle <laughs> liqueur. Liqueur. Turtle soup. Yeah. Carl just threw up his a little bit, didn't he? <laughs> that was so damn gross. <laughs> it it, it fine. <laughs> you, you hear Jesse? Anyways. Oh, it's swimming <laughs> ale. You're done. She looks at you. You're just stop. Please. Anyways, <laughs> mission today is the number five reactor. As you know, we've taken out the number one reactor, but that's not enough. So, uh, to get there, and she just kind of glances over at Biggs and he stands up, starts handing you guys security passes for the train. These are upgraded. We can actually take the passenger train this time. They should get the, they should get us through all the security checkpoints as long as uh, my source is not full of shit. So from the train, you should be able to get right to where we need to go, just like last time. And get in, blow it up, get out. Pretty cut and paste from last time. So go, my feline friend. Do you have the explosives? This one or Kupo? Kupo, do you have the explosives? I gave Kupo them to you last a night. Of letter bombs and let's see, uh, bomb here, bomb there. Um, um, I think what are said. I think. Well, are you sure we have enough? I'd bring uh, an extra one just a bit. It's a reactor. They're big. 
Jesse, do you have any plastic explosives? You are a male person. How do you know what, how to use plastic explosives? I don't know how to use plastic explosives. I expected you all to. But, oh. you know, there's this thing with mailmen when we get kind of disgruntled that we kind of snap. And, yeah. That, that was more anthrax that related. The capitalism, yes. <laughs> Jesse anyways, looks over at, anyways, I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. Jesse looks over at uh, Wedge. Wedge, do you think they have enough bombs? <laughs> Wedge kind of looks back at her. Please. You could never have enough bombs. <laughs> and he uh, reaches back. I got something for you. I think you might appreciate this. And just pulls out a little block about the size of... Uh, we're going to say the size of Barbrick's Fist-ish. With wires coming out of it. And it feels kind of clay-like. That makes Big Boom. It'll be fun. We'll keep it safe in Barbic shell. <laughs> Asta lasagna, just don't get any on you. I, I'm with it. I am not familiar <laughs> with lasagna. What is this? <laughs> I have to sit down. Oh, someone awesome hold me. Made with marmot meat, and then you take these tomatoes that you get in Lanasica. And you squish them up, and then it makes really good food. Ooh, Lanasica. I remember Lanasica. I, I, okay. Um. <laughs> oh, we're heading to the train station. Yes, uh, yes. Train. Yes. Train. Yep, train. Uh, yep, let's go to the train. All right. <laughs> so you're off to the train station. Following back along the same path that you took before. Uh, you get on the train, but you do have to... It is a short stop away. You have to switch to a different train, obviously. So you do that switch, and you're now on the passenger train, heading joyfully towards uh, chaos and mayhem. But nobody else on the train knows that but you. Mm. Do you like once they see Vic, they're like, mm, maybe we should not sit next to this one. Maybe this one is not the one to be my friend today. Well, if we're being honest, like we, most everybody that was in this area was at the drinking competition. As soon as Barberg walks in, they all kind of chuckle and nobody wants to be anywhere near him at the moment. Assuming he still has that smell on him. So you have the train card yourself. Fast. <laughs> Mostly. We, we, we did have 16 hours to make sure he didn't smell no anymore. Yeah, but, you know, you see something like that, even if there's not a smell, you still associate something with it. Yes. Because I'm green, isn't it? No, it's pretty much, uh, they see you walk in, there's that, that's that man that doesn't chat himself. Violently. It's the it, it reminds me of self. Green Goop at it Lab. Yes. It reminds me of Green Goop. They're like... And they like move and they, they like the you've never move. pooped on yourself when someone shoved a magical finger in your rear. Come on, that's just I, terrible. Not a normal I, response for I, a magical I, finger. I'm just sorry. I don't. I, I I don't know if I've ever experienced that. I would not like to experience that. Please do not have me. Experience. I know a guy. We can. I can help you that, out. I will shock the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Uh, uh, with with that, uh, as soon as, soon as he says, it is what it is. <laughs> as soon as he says, "Shock the shit out of you," all of a sudden you hear, or you, the lights kind of go red, and uh, signaling that the uh, scanning station is coming up. Now the train doesn't stop; it just scrolls through it and scans your ID as well for everybody's on board. So you pass through the scanning section, and the lights go back to normal, and everything continues normal. Ooh. That makes me feel better. How many of these checks yes, do we yes. have to go through? Yes, Jesse, how many times do we do this? Uh, there are three checks. If Excellent. we can get past the third one, then we should be home free. Okay. okay. One. And with that, with that, here comes the second check. Lights come on. Everything's fine. Yes. See? We got this. 
And as soon as he says that, the third check hits. The red lights come on. Red lights stay on. And then all of a sudden, the red lights start flashing and an alarm starts going off. Fake IDs detected. Car it's three. Marvick, what did you do? <laughs> Jason's like, that lying son of a bitch gave me bad IDs. We got to get out of here now. Um, how, how do you expect me to do with that? Um, we're well, running you... back of train or front of train? Back Either of train. Way. Back of train. Let's move. Um, how sturdy is the door to this train? Um, well, the current doors on the cab that you're in only go from this train more forward or this train more backward. There's no side I, doors on this one. I have a question. I also have a question after you. Are you good, Barvik? Thinking about doing something. <laughs> okay, well, you think. Um, do, do the doors have windows? Do they have viewports? Yes. How, how many cars down can I see? If I look through the viewport. You are about three cars. You're in the third car from the rear. Okay. So you have two car, one car in front of you and then the caboose. Can I see the caboose? Yes. Mr. Bartovic, do you trust me? Sure. I'm going to cast Vortex Warp. So my eyes flash a yellow color and this air swirls around you. And then Mr. Bartovic is gone. <laughs> And we don't see this, but he I see this as he reappears in the in the the rear. Is there a roll attached to that or does it just happen? Not if he is willing. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. So he appears at the rear in the rear ca cab. <clears throat> and people in that there's there's uh well roll perception for me actually. It's a nat 20. All right. So you clearly are able to uh, clock six people in this cab. As soon as you get in, there's two right by the door. And that, uh, whether it's just because you just appeared or because it's you, they just decide to move out of that cab into the next one. And uh, three of the other, uh, the remaining four also start to do that. But there's still a gentleman laying on the bench. Looks like he might be asleep. But at the end of the cab, you also see the door that would go out the back of the train. I can escape, but I don't know what that would do. What good that would do for the rest of my peeps? Is there an emergency hey. brake access anywhere in this rear cabin of the train? Negative. You are in the slums. They do not give people that much power. <laughs> um. Out, out of character here. Mm -hmm. To do a sneak attack, I have to hide, right? And I don't have to like do anything to hide. I think hiding technique, unless you like out of combat, it just takes. You can just do it in combat. It takes an action, I believe. If you're um, not already seen. Sneak attack. So sneak attack isn't really something that you use. It's just something that happens. Um. So if you have advantage on the attack, or if you have an ally within five feet that is not incapacitated, then you can add your sneak attack damage. Um, but it has to be with a weapon that uses your dexterity. Okay. I think Thank I you. My perception that. check, did I see any bottles near this dr possibly drunken sleeping man that could can still hold liquor? <laughs> <sighs> Why did I teleport that one? <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, you you, you absolutely <laughs> right. do. Um, you see, he's got a half empty bottle in his hand, but he's still kind of holding on to it. So, uh, are the what are the seats made of? Like plastic with a little bit of cloth, like an average bus seat. A little bit of cloth. That's all I need. I'm going to not so sneakily take this bottle of alcohol from this guy uh, quickly. Surprise! Like, gotcha, bitch. Um, as you do that, I want you to roll a perception. All right, Miss Me. Oh, no, that was the wrong kind of accent. <laughs> uh, Koopa, Koopa, are you ready? I'm ready. I can okay. fly out of here anytime now. Well, um, 
I, I am going to spend another spell slot and cast Water Attack to Warp again. Oh, okay. And teleport Koopa down there as well. <laughs> Are you sure okay, you want to Okay, so that's a 17 for me. me. Yes, it is okay. 17 for you. I want to make sure Mr. Barnavik is not in trouble. <laughs> Give me one moment. I forgot to pull something up really quick. So 17 for you. Um... Uh, as, as you uh, do take this bottle from this dude's hand, you, uh, because I added that roll, do not feel him reach into your pocket and take uh, your uh, tinderbox and your rations. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to start pouring the contents of this bottle out on the seat. And then reach for my tinder box, which would be there. And when I see that it's not there, there's only one possible reason that it couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. Roll another perception check for me. Am I there yet? Yeah. You have appeared at the door at this point, yes. Yeah, so as you you realize that, you see him shoot up and try to book it towards the front cart. I'm just going to throw my axe at him. (laughs) As hard as possible, and 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 then a uh, and then a a puff ball appears in front of him as well. Yeah, so th- th- he's, now between, he's now between the no, he's now between the two of you. Okay, because she appears right at the door. <laughs> All right, roll roll your attack. What's the? Uh, it's not a, a, you have to. I mean, you have to roll an attack, and I'd say a dexterity for throwing it. My attack is. A twenty-seven to hit, and no, the actually, I'm, doing, I'm, doing that, I'm doing that too hard. I'm sorry, doing that too. Do just do it with disadvantage since you're throwing it. Can... What's the proper way to do that, Wes? What or what? Where he's not usually th- he's not he doesn't have throwing axes. He's just throwing his big ass axe. Um... How would I? It's just an attack Dis- with this disadvantage. Advantage. Disadvantage would be fine. Yeah, that's that's how. You can great. either do disadvantage or you could do t- you could have it be an improvised weapon, but disadvantage is fine. It's easier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my first roll was a nineteen. My second roll was an eighteen. So <laughs> it's still really high. Because. <laughs> All right, roll, roll your damage then. We're killing civilians. Oh, He's a pull thief. Up that. Um, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat all six of my sorcery points to get I'm my. I'm trying really back. hard to create a distraction, and he's getting in the way, and he stole from me. He brought this upon himself. One d twelve is four. Oh, that's a an eleven. <laughs> so he 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 picks your pocket and starts to book it to the next cart. And in the process, catches a big ass great axe to the back of the skull, and he's dead on the ground now. Oh. I've run over, and I feel him over for all of anything else I can find as well, but mostly I want my tender box so I can get this distraction going. Roll investigation. I cast Burning Hands and set the seats on fire. <laughs> okay. Seats are on fire. <laughs> it's helpful. And- between between you and the door that you need to get out of, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look down at the guy and be like, I kind of feel bad because you're dead, but you did steal that stuff in the beginning, so you you know life lessons and all. That's a sixteen. For the sixteen, you do find your tender box and your rations, and you also see find some a broken necklace that he got from somewhere, and uh, we'll say seventy five go. Might be stolen, but it's mine now. <laughs> okay, right. so you have you have now murdered and uh, pilfered hard, everything from from a uh, homeless looking man on the train that you have also set on fire. Wes, what were you I doing mean, with your sorcery points again? I I am converting them into spell slots, so I get my two second level spell slots back. Okay. So now I'm going to run forward and try to rejoin everybody else and tell them that the distractions uh, in full swing. We just uh, now need to find a good way off. The smoke ought to stop the train. 
Hey, uh, Barvik, you realize that was the rear of the train and that was our way out? That was where we were going. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Do I see... I'm going to... Hang on, I'm going to make an intelligence check real quick. Okay. See if I would think of this. Let's go to the front of the train now. The train only has doors at the ass and at the front, huh? Okay. It's like a bullet Nin train. 19 you're, you're minus a one. I feel like I think I'd do this. Yeah, you're like in a train tube where you're, you're between stations. It has doors on the side, but there's not... It's a wall there. Is there... So when, when you open up the, the door between cars, is there like the, the joining piece? Um, yeah. Okay, everyone into the next car. Flip, flip, flip. And then I will be the last one through. And as we go through, I will shocking grasp the like the electronics around it to get it to decouple. Um, I'm gonna have to have you roll. I'll roll something for it. Yeah. What, what's your attack or what's your uh, spell mod spell attack modifier? Uh, plus four. No, I mean, I'm sorry, like what? Uh, oh, uh, charisma. Charisma, or charisma? Uh, charisma. Yeah, roll a charisma check for me. Natural 20 for 22. Oh, it works exactly as you expect it to, almost even better. So you're separating the cars, and as it does that, it kind of it, it separates it in such a fashion that it kind of gives you a little jolt to start it off to give that little extra gap immediately. Excellent. Now we will slow it down, and we can get off. <laughs> okay. Car. It's, it's the, oh the, car, the car eventually slows down and stops. Are you uh, I, no, do, do, are you guys back in the last car or are you in the first the second car? You would I, be in the second car. The last car is on fire. True story. Yeah, I never left <laughs> the original car we were in, so Oh, so so, he, bar, so ground and then and I I was specifically waiting for everyone to move first. Would you have moved or were you gonna stay there, Gralanan? I was I was in the car that was not on fire. I yes. Right. There's a car that's on fire, the middle car, and then the car you guys started in. And he's separating the middle from the starting car. I, I followed the cat. <laughs> you followed the cat. Oh, okay, so he, he, yeah. he did say he waited for everybody to go through, so he was the last one out. So you're, you're in the middle car now. Yeah. Along with um, the rest of the group and six other individuals that are just terrified thinking you're going to murder them now. This... This is the day that they almost caught Avalanche. And I jump off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so Cheyenne's down on the down on the tracks now. I'm hopping out. <laughs> Me too. I'm running. This is a bad place to be. We're running. It's bad. I flutter down oh, like hang on, I think it's happening. a critical thing. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, so as you guys exit the train and start and move it, start moving where you'd like to go, the people that are still on the train, you hear one of them kind of yell back, "Thanks." I feel like I'm gonna be a little bit late to work now. Also, tell there's them, a fire. Tell them eco terrorism did it. They'll they'll be fine. <laughs> so you leave these people abandoned in a burning train car. Oh, and <laughs> doors open. Can I? They die okay. that's their own fault. That's natural selection. With that. I'm just going to look up. I'm hoping there's someone above me, like 120 feet above me. And we're going to cast a message. I don't have to see them. They just There just has to be someone in range. What's the range, though? 120 feet. Um, roll, just roll a straight 20 for me. Okay. 13. Luckily, there is somebody above you. Excellent. I range. will tell them. Tell authorities there are trapped people in burning train cars. That is it. I thought the burning train cars. Roll, roll persuasion. Okay. It's just a, a, a suddenly a voice in their head. It, yeah, that, it's going to have to be a pretty high DC that it just ha has a random voice tell them what to do and not think they're crazy. 15. Third car? <laughs> No, we can't see them. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm just a person. <laughs> it's just a random person somewhere up above. No, I'm not talking about that. Can I cast Druidcraft? 
Oh, yeah. So I'm going to conjure up a cloud of rain and it's going to put out the fire. I, I don't know if little you cloud of rain would affect big fire. Little cloud of rain would do that? The, it, yeah, for uh, how big does Zerucraft make this cloud of rain? Because at this point, half the train car is on fire. <laughs> you, they, they lit it with a pretty strong alcohol. <laughs> Let's see, I can make falling snow, clouds of rain, clear skies. Oh, no. I can do something about this. I, what does this? I don't I, want to. I, I what don't does want this to, spell? Actually. What does the spell do, though? Like it just lets you change into it and become and start raining somewhere. Oh, I don't change into it. it. Says you create a tiny harmless sensory effect that predicts the weather will be your location for the next twenty four hours. The effect might manifest a golden orb, clear skies, clouds of rain, falling snowflakes. Basically, you you you're conjuring weather. Is it an illusion or actual conjuration? No. That's an actual conjuration thing. I, I think it affects uh, only like five or ten feet, though. Like yeah, it's like a five foot square. What I would need for like a for a fire, though. So. If I can't do it, it's no big deal. I was just trying. So no, you're you're good. Um, roll d roll. Uh, what's your spellcaster uh, stat? I don't, I don't remember. Know where to see that at? Let me. Oh. I can pull you up. I got. It's on here somewhere, but there's so many boxes that I have no clue. It's generally going to be your highest stat, so you're just probably going to be... Oh, that would be strange. Uh, no, um, not, I mean, as far as... It's either Wisdom or... Highest mental stat. Yeah, oh, but, mental stat. So go... Wisdom is the... all zero, so it doesn't matter. Constitution is one, but that, that doesn't matter either. So. I think you're... I think Druid is Wisdom. Wisdom. I don't know. It's fairy. It's your. It's part of your fairy magic, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, I think you picked. You would have had to pick. I. We can check. I can check. I'll check right now. Okay. Yeah, Hold on, people. I mean, um, I guess. It, I guess it doesn't matter. They're both zeros. I'm just trying to get the modifier yeah. from it. So yeah, just roll straight twenty, and I, I get to the points and see if uh, your uh, rain cloud is effective. No, it's not. It's only eight. eight so. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it starts off very well. You're like, oh, yeah, it's actually going to work because this fire starts blowing down and then it catch it moves over to the next couch cushion or the next seat cushion. And somebody apparently been farting in there for a year. So. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, and then uh, with your uh, persuasion there, Cheyenne, yes. uh, we never addressed that. Uh, the <laughs> They hear your voice and they start to believe you for just a moment. But the DC is a little bit higher than that since it's a random voice in their head. And they're like, okay, I drank way too much last night. And just keep walking. Well, I tried. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> if, if these people are dumb enough to stay on burning train, that's their fault. Especially with the door out. <laughs> the door is open. All right, so you're moving on. And it's slowing down, too. We're justifying this. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's stopped at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you continue through the uh, train tunnel. And uh, after a while, you actually stumble upon a uh, access hatch that goes down into the workings of the tunnel. So you can continue to go the path that you are on, or you can try this access hatch. Why fit? I mean, yeah, it's big enough to be able to get an, uh, some of the tools they've got to get up there to work on trains if they're stuck. Like they're probably going to have to in the near future. <laughs> I suggest we take the access hatch. I agree. <laughs> Excellent idea. I don't like cramped spaces. I'm sure it would be fine. I'll float her down, but somebody better turn a light on. That's better than staying up here. I mean, somebody let a train on fire up here. Let's, let's go down. I mean, who on earth would ever do that? Me. I mean, uh, uh, well, it's kind of a look, uh, an access hatch. <laughs> I, I would, I would set a train on fire 100%. Combination effect. <laughs> In my mind, it was going to work out rather well, but, but you know, access hatch. I mean, I mean, it worked out great for us. 
least they're going to be busy with the, the train instead of like... Uh, it was meant to be a diversion. I wanted the authorities to worry about a, a fire train instead of me. So, yes. Anyway, All right. We go down, we go down the hatch. We go down the hatch. All right. So so I open up the moon touch short sword so I can see in the dark. Okay, well, you, you go down the hatch, and it's it's uh, actually a uh, like worker's hatch, so there's lights that go all the way. You're welcome to keep pull your sword out, but you can actually see just fine. Uh, it's a maintenance hatch. That's the word I'm looking for. I apologize. As you go down, um, you hear it in uh, your ears, uh, all of you, from Jesse. What the hell did you guys do? I did I didn't not do, do anything. <laughs> so, what, well... It was an accident. Eat. We're well, on the train, then all of a sudden the train's uh, on fire, and there's less of it. Mr. And I have no idea where the hell any of you guys went. This we are in happen. tunnel behind there train. Was hobo, and he stole from Varvik, and the hobo did this, and the hobo did that, and the hobo, and you see Koopo's wings start fluttering and his eyebrows are twitching because he can't lie really well. <laughs> it's funny, it's voice in the head. Uh huh. <laughs> And it was a hobo. Yep, was a hobo the whole time. Don't worry though, I took care of him. Anyway, I was able to get off the train, and I don't know where I'm at, but I know where you guys are at. Somehow, you stumbled upon the right way. <sighs> intuition. It was the draconic. He has an, an internal compass. You see, that's why he's so valuable. So we're just following him. And if anybody gets in the way, he just lights him on fire because he's a dragon. So yeah, I, I don't think. I do, aren't you blue? <laughs> or, or black? What color is your dragon? Kind right of a personal it, question, it, isn't it? Black, if I remember right. If you are black, you yeah, mean dragon? <laughs> no, it was uh. I oh, know you're copper, weren't you? Uh, uh, brass. Brass. Black. Okay. Oh, okay, that is fire. Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jesse continues. If you continue down that maintenance hatch and just follow the path, eventually there will be a left turn. It's the first left turn you get to. That's actually it should get you pretty close to where we need to go. Okay. All right. Let's go. Hello. I'll meet. I'll meet Wiggs and Wedge. I'll, I'll meet Biggs and Wedge, and we'll try to secure the exit route. You guys just get the bomb placed. Jesse. What? Do, should we expect resistance? I mean, I would expect something. You just kind of lit a train on fire. Yes, but we left it behind us. Yeah, but that's not something that goes unnoticed. I mean, the alarms were already going off before the hobo lit the train on fire, so... Yes, hobo lit train on fire, yes. Yeah, I believe that. We're walking and talking, by the way. You are walking We're going to talk about this or we're going to keep moving. Come on, people! <laughs> It's not Becker and argue about who killed who. Let's get on with it. How in the hell we ever flying ahead? <laughs> How in the hell we ever get any missions actually accomplished? She cut trails off as the mic cuts out. I did not right. realize that I had voice in the head. <laughs> yeah, you might have to ask her about that when you get back. Yes. All right. As you are wandering, you uh. T Turn a corner and everybody roll initiative. In front of you, there are two little smogger looking things and a uh, very, very big looking, not very friendly thing. Little, 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 machi little machine gun of sorts. 21. Oh. 10 for Barvik. 10 for Barvik. Oh, I forgot to add. 21 for Grillo. Brawl, nah, 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 nah. That'd be 21 for me too then. Ooh. What's your dex modifier, Koopo and Gralanon? Plus two. Plus three. Ooh, Koopo wins. No rollies. 
<laughs> no rollies. <laughs> I, I got a three. You, you got a good snug three? I got a three. All right, so... Fitting um, for cat. <laughs> All right, let me finish rolling theirs really quick. All right. So uh, we start off with Kupo. So they are the way they are laid out. There are two little. They look like machines that have exhaust pipes for heads, and they, those two of those standing in front of you, and behind them, kind of between them, is a uh, floor-mounted machine gun. I'm gonna look over and be like, oh, "It looks like a bunch of blowhards here. Let's do this." And it is Kupo's turn. I'm going to go after the first little guy that I see. And okay. I'm going to use a uh, dual wheel. So. Use a what? I'm using uh, my Moon Touch short sword and my short sword. So. Okay. First roll is. Oh, hold on. So the first roll is 16. And that is a hit. Next, next one is 9. That is a miss. So okay. first attack hits. So 1d6 plus 3. 26 plus 3? 1d6. Oh, three. I'm like, good <laughs> lord, how are you doing that much damage? <laughs> no, I wish. I'm like, so God. that would be awful 8 points of damage. 8 points of damage. Fair enough. Alright. That will take us to uh, Grolalalan. Never gets old. No. I'm a chainsaw. Anyways. <laughs> I'm going to attack the same one with my great axe. Okay. Roll it. 19. That is a hit. Dang. 1d12. Where the hell did my d12 go? Right there. It, hey, it, was, right, it was right there. You got a big it's, dice. It's because he has bad eyes. <laughs> 14. <laughs> All righty. That will take us to uh, Butterbick. So, is one of them still? Or both, is everything still alive and undeaded? Um. Yes. I'm going one to of, charge the, the 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 one that they have been attacking. Looks v pretty rough. The other two haven't even been touched. So, I'm going to charge forward to the one that's been beat up a bit, and I'm going to try to unalive it. Uh, on my way there, I'm going to use a bonus action, and I'm going to rage because I don't like things that have exhaust heads. <laughs> Plus, somebody lit a train on fire, and I'm still pissed off about that, so you know, we don't want to talk about it. You were going to do that. That's 24 to hit. That's a hit. Which takes us to this guy. Wait, hit nine. That's fifteen damage. Yeah, what you chop his exhaust head right off, and it starts Take sparking that, and spewing criminal. smoke and oils everywhere. Ooh, yeah, He's a sprayer. I mean, you chopped his hydraulic line. <laughs> Seems to happen. Just saying. Anyway, uh, that takes us to uh, this for the other Smogger's turn, who's uh, in uh, very attack mode since he just capped his friend. Um, he is. All right. He he is going to hit the uh, all of the group because he can see. Or let's see. Let's see. Let me see. Show us a uh, nope. No. That is not a group attack. That is a single attack. I apologize. And he's going to target it at a Barvik. Um, it's a smog attack. Uh, I need you to make a DC co or a constitution save. That's a dirty 20. All right. So you take no damage. Damn. All right. 
It's all about the thought, shell, I, really. I thought I thought that was a half. Oh well. Um, now it is the machine gun's turn, mm-hmm. and he is going to shoot at Miss Kupakan uh-huh. and use. Um, you make an attack roll on you, and that is a thirteen to hit. Uh, it's my armor class. So that is a hit, if I remember right. The roller gets the advantage, right? That uh, goes to the person that rolled the dice. Yeah. So yep, that is it. That is a hit for the machine gun, and he does eleven points of damage to you. Oof. Ouch. Ow. I rolled really well, and that's yes. a good attack. <laughs> and uh, that is his turn. Now we are to uh, Cheyenne. All right, I I will be um, I'm gonna cast Chill Touch on the Gatling gun. Okay. Roll it. All right. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen is a hit. Excellent. So you see, I, I breathe out um, some like icy breath, and it forms into like a skeletal hand, and it just flies towards the guy, and he takes. Oh no! One <laughs> point of necrotic damage, <laughs> <laughs> and cannot heal until start of next. No, he has disadvantage on attack rolls against me until end of next turn. Killing. All right, and that takes us back up to Kupo. Uh, let's see, I am going to. I'm going to use dual swords again. Okay. On and who? I'm using it on the little guy. Okay, the smogger. The smogger, yeah. All right. And that is a fourteen, and the next one is a twelve. First one is a hit. The second one is a miss. Okay. So, D6 again, plus 3. And that is a 7 points of damage. Alrighty. That'll take us back to Gralinan. I'm going to attack the same target she just hit. Okay. Smogger number 2. Smogger number 2. And where's my 17? That is a hit. What are you doing attacking it with? Just your my sword or your axe, I mean? Yeah. Okay. So 1d12 plus 4. And we got a 16. All righty. Wow, you natted that damage roll. Nice. Natted the damage roll. Wish I could have natted the actual hit, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Hit. All right. That takes us to Barbic. Uh, Smogger number two is still alive, but looking very rough. Well, I'm alive this one, too. Maybe not. Uh... <laughs> I swing and a miss this one. Let's we'll see. Hold on. Uh... That's a 13. That is a swing and a miss. <laughs> as, you, <laughs> as you swing <laughs> at him. His head kind of rotates around, and where you were planning to hit is now twi- like rotating through. So as you switch, it just brings right past him. And that'll come to his turn. And he is going to make another smog attack against Barbic. He's going to lean, lean over this time and shoot some black smoke out at you. And uh, make a DC a constitution save. 19. Again, it, there's got to be good exhaust here. It just goes right up over your head and doesn't even hit you. <laughs> now it's the proto machine gun's turn. And he's also going to go for Barbic. They're not liking you. Bring it on! <laughs> and he is going to make an attack and completely utterly miss you. I'm that one point of damage, the cold damage, it kind of ge- blocked his gears a little bit. So it didn't rotate as far as it expected to when it fired and missed you completely. Ah, you're afraid of me. Good, good on you. And that'll take us back to Cheyenne. Um, I'm gonna open my mouth. Fire bolts gonna appear in it, and I'm gonna shoot it at the 
Gatling gun. Okay. I'm going to spend my chaos point <laughs> um, to re-roll that. <laughs> mm. That's a natural one. <laughs> so, three plus four, seven. As you shoot this firebolt, um, it goes right where you're thinking it's going to go. And then suddenly the turret just popped down in the ground for a second and then pops right back up through a little trap door to where it activates and misses it completely. Rude. Rude. <laughs> and I'll take us back to Koopo. How wooed. <laughs> I'm going to use Flurry of, flurry of bl Blows. Okay. Okay. And make sure I do this right. Hold on. Okay. I guess I roll for attack still. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So with so flare of blows, you spend one key point to use your bonus action to make two unarmed strikes. Okay. So so you can do that after you do your actual normal yeah, sword attack. You can do attacks. your your sword attack. And then two unarmed strikes. Okay, so monks, so... monks are crazy. They can have like 17 attacks. Okay, so level four. short attack first. So um, okay. that is a 15. Uh, it hits. What are you hitting at? I'm hitting at the smogger still. Okay. Yep, that is a hit. Okay. And I guess go ahead and do the damage for that first. Okay. Um, 1d6. Go ahead and add your sneak attack too. Because now you've got allies next to you. Five, six, seven, and my sneak attack. Hold on. Oh gosh, why did I choose such a hard character? <laughs> um, plus a d6. Okay. So that is eight, nine, ten. So that's ten damage on the sword. So you and swing then... your you, you swing your sword, st stab at it with the sword towards its facial hole, and as soon as you do, it's. Like sparks just kind of jitters and then falls limp. So I don't I'll... even need to use my other. Uh, oh, we attack. still have a Gatling gun. You just saw okay. the machine gun there. Okay. And it, it was sitting about five feet behind it. So you still have movement left. You can get to it if you're not right next to it. So either way, okay. you're good to get to it. Alrighty. Then I'll go after the machine gun with the bare fist. And gosh, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Especially in light of what you did last time. Okay. 1d4 plus 3. Sorry about the weight, guys. You good? Oh, Nat. So a Nat on the first uh, first attack. On, I got a on four. the attack it? So, and the second one, I got a 2. So. Well, what's then, your... You, have, you, you still have to, have to do your attack damage. First. Yeah, you have to roll oh. the hit first. You have to roll the d20 to see if you hit with your oh, d20 oh, to okay. the next one. Oh, you're good, you're good. Okay, I didn't hit, so well, neither hit. It's a four and a five, so. I mean, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> that sounds All better right. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that your turn then? That's my turn. All right, over to Growlin' Ann. Well, there's only one thing left to, you know, beat the hell out of. Very true. So, we're going to serenade with eight eggs. barrels. Yeah, I'd be scared if it was 12, but... Oh, fair. That's fair. What's my plus? 16. That is a hit. All right. Where's my D12? 11. All righty. Anything else you'd like to do? That's, that's all. All right. Barvik, you're up. Going to charge at the machine gun, still enraged and in frenzy. That's a twofer. And I'm going to swing. Double check my numbers here. Hold on, hold on. That's a 23 to hit. Miss. Miss. <laughs> yes, it's a hit. yes, it's a hit. <laughs> right. Uh, 
That's 15 damage. Wow. Good job. And then in Frenzy, I'm going to use a bonus action and hit that bastard again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roll it. Nat 20. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Seven. That's 13. Uh, so doubled is what? Uh, 26. Is so after after the first hit, you can see that the, it's like barely hanging on, but it's still going. That second hit, you just demolish it. it you hit it. It flies, hits the wall and just explodes. I'm going to say to its corpse, I'm going to say, tell your friends about us. Roll a perception. Oh, all right. Oh, that's not good. Nine perception. Ten. Yeah, you yeah. you tell it you tell it to tell your friends or its friends about you, and uh, you notice nothing. It's more to bully its corpse, so I'll take. That's it. fair. That's fair. So we can move on. Um, really quick, let's take a quick bathroom break though, and snack break and whatnot, and then okay. we'll come back and continue. Don't so... judge me for what I bring back up here. We are back, and everyone is thrown around again. Easily. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's because she's got her camera on again. <laughs> Sorry, that was my fault. You're good. You're welcome to leave it on. <laughs> yeah, leave it on. Fine. You'll just rearrange. Yeah, we just have fun. to rearrange a couple things when that. When yeah. we, we because right now it's saying you're Cheyenne. You know, yeah, now we gotta find where he is. No, I am Shion. I'm you yeah. though. I never say it right. I'm sorry. Correct me, please. I'm so I remember. Shion. Shion. Well, they, yeah, it's me. I am Shion, Shion, the antagonizer. I like that. Can I use that as a title? Right way. Wes is now our DM. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I have old power. That means I'm an <laughs> honor. Everyone make wisdom saving throws. If anybody, if any of the cats get the DM power, Earth I'm a goner. <laughs> That's a barbic. Turtle soup. Turtle and a half shell. Turtle power. Ooh. Huh. There we go. Teenage, there. teenage and a half shell, not turtle and a half shell. Or maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't fucking no, know. No, it's heroes and a half shell. Turtle heroes power. and a half shell. Turtle power. Turtle power. I'm so I'm sorry. I didn't really actually grow up with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but they're the world's most fearsome fighting team. Their heroes are in a half shell, and they're green. I had Power Rangers. When the evil shredders attack, or when the evil shredder attack, Power Rangers for the last thirty those years. Those turtle boys don't cut them no slack. Fantastic. See, I I loved Ninja Turtles when I was little. Oh, they no, were I was shit. obsessed with it. All right, and we're actually back. <laughs> we're fixed. A little too rash. A little too rash. All right, so you have thusly dispatched the uh, security that you ran into in the form of uh, two smoggers and the uh, proto machine gun. And all right, what are you guys going to do? You gonna, I'm assuming you're going to continue down the maintenance hatch. It's just a hallway, right? There's no yeah, pass left or right at the moment. Going to. I'm going to nope. loot the corpses to see if there's any valuables on them. Roll your investigation. And to answer your question, uh, that, yeah, that uh, Jesse told you to just keep following the corridor until you can actually go out uh, to the left. So okay. until you get to that, that left, then you're just straight on. Uh, that's a plus zero, so that's a 15. At the 15, you find pretty much a spare, a, like just piles of nuts and bolts and all that but you do see um a couple pieces uh we'll say <clears throat> there, there's a couple pieces that are intact that you can grab and probably sell on the black market market if you'd like to he could get like, you back in good graces with weapon shop owner like one of the gun barrels isn't bad here you can slide that out if you like to 
Um, I'm definitely taking that gun pieces. Yeah, because and one and one of these somebody pooped on a ceiling or something. I, I don't know. It was not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I All right, so you, responsibility. you're taking yes, the we, gun barrel, we, we, and that's it? Yep. Okay. All right, then you keep moving through, and nothing happens. Until eventually you come out onto, a, you, you see your left turn that you have there, and you take it, and you come out onto a landing. I look down. Oh, don't look down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty 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 far up. You you everybody roll a perception for me. That, 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 where'd my dice go? There's my dice. Oh, that's a nineteen. That's 18. a fourteen for a group of con. Okay. Be a kid's natural or one in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I see nothing. So Cheyenne apparently is very afraid of heights because he happens to look down. And all he sees is that we are way high up. Nothing else. Gets, he sees nothing gets else. Gats do not do heights. You'll land on like the But um, <laughs> I do not Every, trust. Everybody else sees uh, the the platform you're on. There is a little slide that actually goes all the way down to the uh, main floor where everything's kind of at. But mm -hmm. it looks very very similar to uh, right outside of the reactor that you were at the previous time. So it's a very similar layout. So you see, so, you've got the like what, the door off to the right. Then it has some stairs go down. The door that was a elevator door that you came out of. That's there, and then the stairs that go down into the actual reactor room that you went into before. Same setup. Excellent. So we got this cakewalk. You but say that. the only way to get down to the level that has the door on it is the slide that you can see. I'll go first. Last one in is a rotten egg. I dive forward. <laughs> As you go down the slide, uh, I want you to uh, make a dexterity. We'll say save. Okay. Cheyenne, you're you're. you're do we want to say it's actually that you are afraid of heights? Yes. It'll modify. It'll modify your roll then. Okay. Can I just do, throw do, him do, up do, on top of me and let him and let him ride my shell the way down? I mean, if you catch it before he jumped in. Twenty-one. Uh, yours is gonna be disadvantage, Cheyenne. Oh, yeah. I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna oh. make my way for the for the for the kitten. A ten and uh, Carl, did you say yours was twenty one? Yeah, okay, you're you're fine. It, it wasn't a high DC. You make it down. You're a little shaky by the time you get to the bottom, and you didn't have a good time, but you made it safe. <laughs> Barbara, what were you doing? I'm headed for the kitten to see if I can catch him if he's having woes because uh -huh. uh, turtles and skiing on their shells. I, it's fun. I am already down, Mr. Barvik, but thank you. Yeah, I apologize. I already RP'd that and didn't hear that you said that ahead of time. Uh, oh. We'll say you, you reached to grab him and just missed a sail. Like, you got a couple of furs in your hand, but nothing substantial. Oh. Odds are evens as I go down. <laughs> Roll a deck series save for me. Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh, I think you Plus might one. have advantage Plus on next thirty saving throws that you can see. I do. I think you might. Let me double check. It, it would be under features and traits. It, it'd be called like danger sense or something like that. And... Uh, advantage on decks against effects you can see. Advantage. Yep. It's on your main street uh, above your saving uh, throws and all that. Yeah, I needed that. My first roll was a six. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for getting all them nat 20s earlier. Well, that's a nat one, so my advantage is the six I got the first time. I get a plus one to that, so seven? So... For the first like 70, 80 percent of the slide, you're doing great. You're kind of like going up on the side, feeling all cool. You're in your shell, just sliding. 
And then you take a corner a little bit wrong, and you go up too high on the side, and it kind of flips you over. So now you're riding on the back and kind of your head as you hit the bottom of it. And you no. just kind of skid out on top of your dome. No. No damage, just embarrassment. Can, can you flip yourself back over, Mr. Barbic? Yeah, but don't look. It's it's real weird. Don't look. Don't nobody look. <laughs> don't look at me there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so everybody but Koopa was down so far. Koopa, how are you getting down? Or are you getting down, I should say? I just fell down. Yeah. Fair enough. You took you, you took the safest way. <laughs> All right, you you're now at the equivalent of the bottom of the stairs that you would have taken down, and in front of you is a door. Can I go through it like the Kool Aid Man? <laughs> I mean, sure. Roll a strength check. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. That's not a nat one. We're doing way better. <laughs> Four. Uh, 16? It is better than that one, but unfortunately this door opens outward. So you try to run through it and it just catches on the door jam. And you just splat face first into it. And, it. <laughs> and take two damage. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use, I'm going to cast Mage Hand and use it to just open the door. The door <laughs> opens don't. with ease. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it, it does catch a little bit on Barbic's Smack. foot Smack. as you try to get past it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it opens with these, and you're able to go right in. Does anyone think this might be too easy? You know, did my hit points go up at all when I leveled to four? Because I still think I'm at thirty-eight. Oh, yeah, you yes, should they do would whatever have. to buy maxes. We can we can <laughs> do that if we get into combat again today. I mean, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you might want to start doing that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ma manage your character to manage levels. Um and then at the on the character class screen, uh there should be a manage HP button on the right hand side. And then you just want to add twelve plus your well, you just want to add 12 to whatever the number is in the left box, because it adds the Constitution already. You're a barbarian. You get D12 hit dice. I'm a sorcerer, and I get a D6 hit dice. I'm very sad about that. Yeshi. <laughs> okay. <sighs> That's better. All right. Anyhow, so you go through the door. And again, the, you find the same set of paths to, to take you down to the main reactor that you did before. This one's a little more well-kept, but it's everything else is the same. Like, there's same ladder, same pathway, like, again, carbon copy. So you have yeah. your path that goes down to where the reactor actually is. And, yeah, nothing's happening so far, so. Hmm. I feel like this might be too easy. It's quiet. Oh, no. Okay, I mean, I won't look gift horse in mouth. <laughs> but I'm going to get the plastic explosive out of Barvik's shell. A little too quiet. A little too rough. <clears throat> All right, so you collect the plastic explosive out of Barvik's shell, and you it's proceed down to down. the reactor. Again, without incident. And you're at the reactor, ready to roll. Bum, bum. And this is where Barvik dies! <laughs> well, we got the plastic explosives out of your shell, so maybe you won't die. So, um, Can I can I look around the... Because uh, we're like in the reactor room now, right? Mm -hmm. Can I look around to see if there's anywhere that, like, another, like, I don't know, scorpion with laser beams? 
Roll an investigation check for me. Hey, I'm very bad at those. Um, where's my investigation? That's a minus one. Eleven. I, everything looks fine to you. Like you don't see anything out of the ordinary. I'm gonna do yeah. that too because Kufo probably learns from his mistakes. So, okay, and that would be a fourteen. Uh, again, uh, nothing looks out of the ordinary to you. Everything looks like it's business as usual. So I go I... over to the reactor and I put the plastic explosives on it. Okay. Roll your performance. Performance. Okay. It's a lasagna. Yeah. Don't get any on you. Oh, don't say that. Okay. I, still, I still don't know what lasagna is, Miss Barbie. Nine. You watch Mission Impossible, you'll figure it out. What is the mission impossible? <laughs> that was a nine. I mean, it, it it was pretty basic to get to. That you put it on there. It's not sitting as straight as you'd like it to, but it's it, it, it's attached. So it it goes on just fine. And uh, now your bomb is on. Uh, and aren't? How long, long do we have to get out? Now. See, <laughs> Jesse forgot to tell you, and uh, she apologizes, uh, that we modified the bomb this time, so it's not necessarily on a timer. It's on a proximity thing, so once you get so far away, it triggers everything. Oh, excellent. Who's Should firing we... the proximity sensor? You are Mr. Varvik. It's my nipple Did ring, you... isn't it? It is. It is Mr. Ravik. <laughs> See what what yes, what you guys ha Jesse. haven't found out yet with the with the proximity sensor and the uh, earpiece and all that. You were all passed out, and Jesse messed with you all a little bit. She equipped your gear for you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my nipple felt weird. You've already got four rings in there. You, how would you notice the fifth one? Because it still feels weird. <laughs> Yes, it jingles, we go. it yes. jingles too much. Yes, it's hear, time to go. I hear an extra jingle. What the hell? Jingle, <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. So you leave back up the same way you went. Uh, you obviously are not going to be climbing back up the slide and going back to the burning train. So your uh, oh. option is either stay here or go up the stairs. Actually, <laughs> Koopa. Yes. You can, you can just teleport up to top of slide, yes? You can fly up there? I can fly, yes. I can get the rest of us to the top. Okay. If okay. we want to go that way. <laughs> do we do do we want to go out the way we came in or do we want to go out the front door? I mean your extraction plan is to go out the front door. Oh yes, I forgot Jesse was going to be there. Yeah. She's, okay, let us go out the front door. I did kind of light the train on fire, and and it was meant to be a distraction, <laughs> and, and and that does mean it's going to draw attention. It was the hobo, not you. That's right, the hobo lit the train on fire as a distraction, which is going to draw attention. So we should go the other way. Was this before or after he split himself in half? That, that was before. That happened after. He he <laughs> fell tragically uh, down that little bit of a slope uh, onto my axe. I like how it was Kupo that set the fire. <laughs> and no one's acknowledging that. <laughs> That's true. Well, okay. It wasn't actually me. I just was going to do it. <laughs> I'm going right. to... Anyways, so, yeah. So, so your path out is up the stairs. Yeah. We're going up the stairs. One, two, three, four. Each one of these is going to be a drink later. Five, six. Please don't count them out. There's like 40 stairs. I I am just draped over him. Like sack of <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> Why are you guys getting so out of breath? Because I'm... <laughs> I have no. Listen, Barvik, I am a cat. I do not like stairs. I mean, honestly, I probably didn't even notice your weight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
All right, so you uh, get to the top of the stairs, and uh, you come find yourself at a familiar uh, elevator. Familiar type of elevator, I should say. I'm going to push the <laughs> button this time. Darth Vader's okay. wife. I'm not going to punch it. I'm just going to push the button. <laughs> push the, all right, so you push the button, and uh, there happens to be an elevator there already, so it opens up, and you're able to go in. I'm in. Yeah. I sense a disturbance the force. I don't trust any of this, but I'm going in. <laughs> I feel the same way. I don't yeah, trust any of this, but Shion wouldn't care. As we're sitting in there, I'm going to be like, did that door look lubed to anyone else in here? Uh, I just... No. I, feel like, I feel like Shinra is just Asking to get blown up at this point. <laughs> there was, there was one Gatling gun and a couple little things that blew smoke. Like that was it. Okay, yeah, they were cute, weren't they? This has gone a little too smooth. Any, uh, I mean, again, let us go upstairs. All right, so you uh, go upstairs. Ah, the button. <laughs> the elevator starts rising. Got a couple minutes. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take the hard elevator, part. Right? My my the back my back shell's my real tough part. I'm gonna put that toward the doors as it opens. If there are projectiles, it should at least bounce off the shell and save somebody. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, so you you do that uh, as the and as the elevator is going up, you just hear the the music. <laughs> And it's you're <laughs> empty, Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> you arrive at the top, the door is open, and nothing happens. And open. And open. I'm going to spin my head around with my back still face that way because my neck's real long. Just be like, oh, ain't that the damnedest thing? All right. <laughs> So for, as you're walking out, you find yourself on a, a catwalk, much like the last one that you're there. Oh, we have a question. Could we have taken a short break before all of this? <laughs> or are you saying a short, no? A short, a, short, a short rest? Yes, short rest. Are you telling me no? That's okay if you tell me no. Um, When would you have done it? I don't know. Between setting the fires and moving on here, or before that you were at full rest? Yeah. Anyway? No, you're good. Never mind. If if you uh, could come up with a way, what point when you would have done it, I would absolutely say yes. I don't think we have. I just want my sorcerer points back, but it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> what were you saying, Jody? Probably when we were programming the bomb, that would have taken a little bit. Short rest is an hour, though, isn't it? I believe it's like forty-five minutes to an hour. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it wouldn't have taken that long to get the bomb set up. No, it would have taken like maybe fifteen. Yeah, at most. I feel like probably it's fine. I just want my resources back that I blew it's... on the train because I was dumb. <laughs> it's fine. Oh it's fine. <laughs> All right. So as you exit the elevator, you find yourself on the catwalk, uh, very like the one you went to the last reactor. Weird, right? So it comes out from the elevator, then tees off to either side, and you uh, know from previous experience and from what you remember of the briefing mission, that your right turn is the exit you need to go to. Very, All right, uh, let's go! It's a very similar deja vu experience here. <laughs> let's go see what horrible things awaits us. So you're going to the right door, I take it? Absolutely. As you get to the right door... Yeah, what are you investigating? I'm investigating to see if there's any enemies about. Uh, as you get to the door or before you go to the door? As we get to the door. Well, it, funny thing is, I, I'm not even going to make you roll that, because as soon as you reach for the handle of the door, you hear from behind you, you'll find it's locked. Uh-oh. Oh, um, no. Turn around. <laughs> All right. And uh, everybody roll a... History trick, we'll say. Uh, I, I am famous. I am famously good at this. Four for Koopo, It sounds like nineteen. 
That is an 18 for Barvik. It's a plus zero. So everybody but Kupo instantly recognizes this as uh, President Shinra, the uh, owner and operator of Shinra Incorporated that runs this entire city and most of the planet. (laughs) Jerk alert! I'm going to shoot a firebolt at him. Pokemon, who's that? R- roll it. That, that's bad okay. news. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. He clearly has some sort of <sighs> bodyguard who he calls Steve, and Steve is really a scary <laughs> Steve. Close. An eight? Yeah. You, you shoot this fireball at him, and he, he just kind of stands our arms behind his back, and as soon as it comes close, he just kind of leans out the way. And just grins at you. So you all must be that. What What do you call yourselves? Yeah. I'm oh gonna step gosh. forward and be like, "That's none of your damn business." I too want to do eggs. Our name's not Avalanche. No, it's not Avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> Avalanche. That's it. I said it's not Avalanche. Stop talking! (laughs) As his eyes kind of take you all in one at a time, Garland, he kind of pauses on you for a minute. He says, you you look familiar. Yeah, well, he's taken. You can't have him. Yeah, it's been a while. You can have the cat. (laughs) Cat comes with explosives. Been a while. Wait, are you the one that quit Soldier to join Avalanche? I mean, I could tell you've been exposed to Mako from the look in your eyes. Well, but tell me, what was your name? <laughs> Growling on. I, forgive me for asking, but I, I can't be expected to remember every little peon's <laughs> name. Unless you become another Sephiroth. Yes, he was brilliant. Maybe a little too brilliant. No. <laughs> So, I, I'm, I can only assume that you're here trying to do a repeat of last thing. Waste of good fireworks. And I, I, all to do it just so you will die doing what you love. Does that feel like a good waste, a good spent of your time? One way to find out. How droll. You're being to bore me. I'm very busy, so if you'll excuse me, I have a dinner I must attend. He turns around to go walk out the other door, at the door behind you, or behind him. And yells back, but don't worry. I've made arrangements for a playmate for all of you. Hope you choke on your dinner. And as so have you seen any mail? As you say that, drop down from a helicopter. You, I don't know, like, they were silent enough, or you were focused enough, you didn't hear anything. Helicopter just drops. What is known as the president, as as Joss has said, be Airbuster. This is our techno soldier. Our weapon development department created him. I'm sure the data he'll extract from your dead bodies will be of great use in future experiments. <laughs> and roll initiative. Hey, Hellas. Unfortunately for you, I already pooped my pants. <laughs> that would be a two. That's Nat- another ten. <clears throat> Nat 20. Dan. Uh-huh. All right, Barvik and uh, Cheyenne, what are your uh, m- mods? Uh, your exact mods. Plus one. Roll it! Each roll a d20. Higher one gets to go first. That's a six. Thirteen. All right, Cheyenne. <laughs> Cheyenne. 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 And then Barvik. <sighs> Well on. I accidentally closed down my wrong page, so I got to get you to the right map now. Uh, I was going to say, do we have a battle map for this one? We do have a battle map for Sweet. this one. Should be good to load. Wrong button. Uh, boom. Hey. It's a good day to die. Battle map. Yeah. 
So he was dropped pretty much right in the middle of you. So that is the the Airbuster that was is here to destroy you. And we are going to start with Gralanan. Is your attack first? Mm. We are farmers. Bum ba dum bum 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 bum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a bonus action of rage first. All right. And then I'm going to use form of beast claws. So I get to attack okay. twice. All righty. So what did I win? My is my so the first one's 18 that is a miss damn <laughs> AC's up there on this one yes He's it an attack is bot. dirty 20 for the second that one's a hit alright so form of beast or er, claws mm, I don't know what to claws there's my D6. So nine. All righty. All right, that'll take us to Xi'an. Xi'an. All right. Um, first, I'm going to reach over um, with my paw and just like kind of just like boop the shell, the back shell of uh, Barvik. And I'm going okay. to cast Dragon's Breath. <laughs> um, so, you touch one willing creature and imbue it with the power to spew magical energy from its mouth, uh, provided it has one. Uh, do you want fire? Uh, fire, cold, acid, or lightning? I'm, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say <laughs> lightning. Uh, yeah, lightning. Let's do lightning. Excellent. Um, so now as a, on a bonus actions on your turn, you can spew a 15-foot cone of lightning that does 3d8 or 3d6 lightning damage. And you have to make you have to make dex theory saving throws when that happens. Remember that, Mr. Barbic. And then I'm going to back up to the as far back as I can. Alrighty. Let me sorry, let me check, check on something really quick. Oh. And I need to roll for wild magic. Were you okay? Uh, Mr. Wes. Yes. I can't see it on the page you sent me. Do you know how uh, what flanking does? Does it give you advantage? Gives you advantage on attack rolls. Okay. Fair enough. But you have to be able to draw a straight line between the characters in order for it to technically be flanking. So would it would it not be flanking where you guys are at place currently? Uh, if Barvik moves forward and down on his turn, then that would be flanking between Barvik and Gralanan. Okay, but fair enough. All right. Um. So I I apologize. So what what were you asking me right before that? I lost my train of thought before that. Oh, nothing. Like, uh. Oh no! It's because you gave him oh. his fire breath. Or yes. his, uh, lightning yeah. breath, lightning and breath. I move, and then I'm moving as far back as I can. That's right. I apologize. You're good. All right, that'll take us to Kupo. No, oh, sorry, I apologize. Barbic, thank you, Kupo. My bad. Um, would it behoove someone for me to move where the words flanking? It would give you and Gralin an advantage on your attack rolls. Let's do that. Let me move there. It's not want to cooperate, but that, there it is. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then I am going to think about how I want to do this. I am going to
actions. My fr I'm going to use a bonus action to rage. Okay. And then I'm going to attack to the face hole. Roll it with advantage. Plus. 22 to hit. That's a hit. That's, that's it. <laughs> The wrong dice. One. Nat on the damage roll. Ooh. So that's 18. Okay. Anything else? That's my turn. All right. That'll take us to coupon now. Apologize for that mix up. Okay, I'm going to use my boomerang, and I'm going to stay where I'm at. And I think I'm flanking, so. Um, yeah, you would be. So that would be a 20. Oh, flanking two. only works in melee. Oh, it's okay. only melee? Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. Okay, so that's 22 to hit. That is a hit. And I got a crit. Of a D4, and I add that's a seven hit or seven damage. Do I double that? Um, not on the damage roll, you have to crit the attack roll. Okay, so seven damage. Okay, all righty, and that takes us to uh, Gralinan. Nope, not Gralinan. I have too many names on here. Like, wait a minute. That takes us to uh, the Airbuster's turn now. He is going to uh, fire an energy ball towards um, yeah. Xian. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, God, that's a hit. That's a 30 to hit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, actually, I apologize. He can't target you. It's only a five-foot range on it. Oh, excellent. So I'm going to reroll all that. <laughs> That's going to be Barbic then. I apologize. <laughs> oh, it's, still, it's, it's still a 28 to hit, though. So that I'm assuming that's a hit. Yeah, he only had to beat 17. Okay, cool. And that does 13 damage. 12 damage. Um, and that is his turn. That'll take us back to Gralinan. All right. I am going to... I'm going to do my, my claws again. Okay. Remember, you do have advantage. So... 23 on the first. Hit. 21 on the second. Also hit. So both hit. And it was... D6, 1d6 plus 2d6. Ten. Ten total? Ten total. All right, back to Shan. All right. Um, I am going to uh, open my mouth, and this whirling mass of energy forms in my throat as I cast Chaos Bolt at a second level. Um, 21 to hit. That is a hit. Okay. I need to roll... 3d8, and one of them does... I think it's 3d8. Oh, it's a second level. Wait. Oh, okay. 3d8 would be 6. Sorry, first time I've got this though. Okay. 
Okay. It takes uh, 16 points of thunder damage. All right. Because at that point, uh, thunder. Thunder hit. Never mind. I thought, uh, that's and a wild I magic surge goes off. <laughs> Let me pull up my wild magic magic table. Hang on. <laughs> That means I get my Traits of Chaos back. Yes, that's true. Wild magic's all sorts of fun. Uh, Where did it go? I forget, do you roll the the 100 or do I? I do. Do you have the table up? Um, I don't, but let me see if I can find it, because I think it's fair. It's like the second page in the Sorcerer's Fit. Yeah. 73 is what I rolled. I went too far. What am I doing? I'm on my computer. <laughs> Creatures and trains. Automatic surge. Okay. There we go. 73? 73. A uh, random creature within 60 feet of you becomes poisoned for 1d4 hours. Okay, who's within 60 feet of me? Uh, everybody. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a d4. Uh, let's say Kupo's one, Growlman's two, the machine is three, and Barvik is four. Okay. Two! Growlman, you're poisoned. <laughs> four. Four. Oh, what else do I roll? 1d4 for hours. Oh, shit. For one hour. <laughs> okay. So that, that means disadvantage on all attack rolls and ability checks until you're no longer poisoned. Um, oh. as you're flanking, that just gives you flat. Yeah, it just takes away your advantage on attack. Okay. Um, or yeah. just gives you a regular. I'm sorry. I'm regular. Not, yeah. Not advantage. Of... Okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, it's for, for my bonus action, I'm going to consume one of my first level spell slots to get two sorcery points back. Okay. And that'll be my turn. All right. That'll take us to Barrick. I'm going to, as a bonus action, Frenzy. And now I'm raged and frenzied in the face. I'm going to swing my axe at this thing again. Natural 20. Ooh, nice. And 14, 15, 16 points of damage, and then double that for the nat. 32. And that's all I can do this turn. But next turn is going to be a whack'em turn, because it all starts to come together. Remember, Mr. Varvik, you can also use your bonus action to breathe lightning. Yep. No, that's the next one. So now, now I've got that going for me. So now I get two attacks and a bonus. So the next one's gonna whack, whack. <laughs> All right, that'll take us to Koopo's turn. I'm gonna move back, and I'm gonna use my boomerang again. Okay, back all the way. Uh huh. Okay, roll it. Sixteen. Sixteen is a miss. Okay. You throw it. And it, it, your aim's just a little bit off, and it just actually just circles all the way around his head, comes right back to you. Okay. And now it is oh, that's his a halo. Turn. He is going to uh, target Kupo and uh, cast Big Bomber. As you're, uh, you see, he has a little vent open up right behind his head, and a missile comes up out of it and comes right towards you. And I need you to make a deck saving throw. One hand free, right? Um. Uh, well, yeah, well, I, you can catch. Huh? I mean, it, it, it's yeah, it's more an AOE as opposed to a targeted one. And I think that okay. can only be targeted. Okay, what was that you said before? A deck saving throw. Deck saving throw. Okay. Um, that would be a. Uh oh, <laughs> that would be a six. All right. So you fail the said deck saving throw and take 17 damage. I'm KO'd. Oh, shit. Mm. We really should have taken a short rest at some point. 
<laughs> and that'll be his turn. So now it'll be over to Gralanan. All right. I'm going to swing with my great axe. Okay. Roll it. Shit, don't roll off the table. All right. What was my... So I lost the advantage, but I still have my... My hit to dice, right? Yeah, your, your normal attack roll is at this point. not mm-hmm. Just not advantage. Okay, 19. That is a hit. All right. One D12. You got a barbarian on either side just whacked him with ha- these axes. <laughs> <laughs> 12. Chop. All righty. I really want to roll a crit. <laughs> No, there's a reason, because I took the feat Great Weapon Master Attack at level four. Ah. I really want to roll a crit. <laughs> <laughs> roll a crit, too. <laughs> All right. Uh, that'll take us to uh, Shion. Okay. Since Kupo is unconscious, um, I am going to... So my eyes are going to glow white, and... And I'm going to spend my two sorcery points to quicken a spell. Uh, and I'm going to quicken Vortex Warp to teleport Kupo to my side. Where about? Right next to you? Yeah, right next to me. Um, and then I am going to use my action to attempt a medicine check to stabilize her. Okay. Do it. Or him. Uh, I'm going to hit them. Them. Ten. Ten. Which I believe for saving I think, it, for, I think, I think that that that's a, exactly what I needed. I think that is the DC, yeah, I believe so. <laughs> okay, right. so Kubo, you are not making death saving throws. You are not at one hit point though. You're just You're knocked out. You're stable. 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 Okay. Uh, so all right. where do I put that on the sheet? Uh okay. I just leave it the way it is, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just remember it until something else changes. Okay, and that is... I'm going to move down, so I'm behind Barvik, but still against the wall. Alrighty. Okay, and that'll that... end my turn. Okay, that'll take us to Barvik. I'm gonna swing my axe. Roll it. 26. That's it. That's 12 damage. Okay. I'm going to swing again. Do it. 24 to hit. That's it. That's 13 damage. And then as a bonus action, I am going to spew the electricity from my mouth, screaming, eat this! Make a dexterity saving throw. Dex save throw. Uh, That will be an 18. Okay, so that is a success. So half damage. 3d6. Half damage. So 5, 2... That's 15 even, so half of 15. I don't know how you want to do that. That'd be eight. And then since because you're actually using lightning, it actually does double damage, so that's actually still 16. Oh, so you ended up doing more damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That would have jacked him up if he'd not passed that deck save. <laughs> the save is only 12. Yeah, that's fair. And his dex is plus five on a save, so. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, anyways. All right, that takes us to Kupo, which she's done. It's good. Now, she's not making death save, so we actually stroll right past her. Them, sorry. Um, and that'll take us to the Airbuster, who, after getting electrocuted by a, a certain turtle, is going to uh, ro- or ro- ro- rotate around to- facing him. And uh, just use his revert his thrusters and just run his base right into you. Hip check. Pop. And somehow, 
As big as he is and as slow as you are, he misses completely. <laughs> His nav systems are off and he just kind of shoots off to the side of you instead of hitting you. Hey! And that's his turn. So now it'll take us back to Growling End. All right. We're going to swing with that great axe again. All right. 23. That's it. Where's my AP 12? Seven. Seven. All righty. Back to oh. Xian. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. No, I no. apologize. How much time has passed? Am I still in rage or... Oh yeah. Um. You, yeah. As long as you deal damage or take damage in a turn, you're still in rage. Okay, up to one minute or ten. Okay, yeah. So, um, there's another plus two melee damage with strength weapons. Okay. Yep. Alrighty. I completely forgot about. Got that. it. All right. There we go. I'm done. Uh, is that it. Okay. That'll okay. take us back to Chan. <laughs> um. My my eyes are gonna glow again. Um. And the 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 writhing mass of energy in my mouth is going to go off and I'm going to cast Chaos Bolt. Uh, 19 to hit. That is a hit. Excellent. 2d8. Okay, and you take 15 points of psychic damage. Nice. So the, the orb turns like a purpley iridescent color, and as it shoots out, it kind of just like envelops him. Um, and, oh, I need to roll for wild magic. Um, we're good. Almost, but we're good. <laughs> yeah. All right. That uh, takes us back over to Barvik. I am going to swing my axe. Natural 20. Good lord. <laughs> All right. Hold on, I gotta pull this up. You'd think I'd remember, but I'm dumb. Loaded dice. D12 plus strength. That's 13 plus. damage, uh, 26. Okay. My second swing of the dice is... no. that's not even gonna be a hit. Hold on, 11. 19. That's it. It's a hit! Oh, but that's not good. That's eight damage. And then for my... Now, uh, two um, questions. Yeah, what's up? Did that kill him? I was say what? How, how do you want to kill him? I want to... I want that... Because the first was... A, <laughs> this. The second one was a backhand, and I just want parts of him to go sailing towards where his stupid Presidente went, so I can be like, take that! Bitch. Well, the president is through the door that is behind, currently behind Sean and Kupo. Oh, maybe don't. Oh, I mean, just in the direction he left. That's where so they towards Sean and Kupo. <laughs> uh, towards us. Oh well, I guess not. I just wanted. I just wanted I mean, to backhand I'll, him I'll, and make I'll, it look I'll, epic. I'll allow it. <laughs> I just wanted to look epic. Just the swinging back swing and then just. <laughs> I mean, it looked pretty epic. Like if if this was bunkers and badasses, you'd definitely get some badass points. Yeah. <laughs> my my bonus question was going to be: Can I throw one of my health potions at our poor fallen friend, like a like a, a nano grenade, and just have it help her? Is it? Uh, <laughs> I I say you can now run it over to her and give it to her. I will do that. I will run over and I will give her one of my four health potions. Thank you. Pouring it down her gullet. I'm assuming. Yep. That's 2d4 plus 2, Wes? Yeah, if it's a regular one, yes. So go ahead and roll that, uh, Miss Koopa. Okay, 2d4 plus 2. So that makes a whole total of 5 points. All right. Hey, you're, you're, you're back you're up. Al you're alive. I'm assuming she's pretty wounded still, so I'm just going to throw her on top of my shell so we can keep moving. I've got uh, little X's in my eyes. As 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 her <laughs> eyes open and uh, she comes back to consciousness, you start to uh, notice a, a little buzzing behind you, and uh, 
Everybody roll an investigation real quick for me. Oh dear. Or perception. Perception actually we'll say. Oh dear. Nat twenty. No, it's not a nat one. I actually rolled a two. I'm just pissed because why couldn't I have done that during an attack? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eleven. What was Koopa? Seven. Seven. So, uh, <laughs> Barvik and Koopa are pretty focused on making sure Koopa's alive. Sean, you kind of starting to notice. Garland, you absolutely like the. It's between you and your friends, so you see the. Uh, husk of this airbuster start to like kind of shake and arc and there's lightning starting to come over it and it goes boom destroying the middle part of this path here pretty much everything except for that you guys are standing on is falling and da- falling down <laughs> and with that and with so everybody makes a deck save uh, what's my Sixteen. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, it's a fourteen. Twenty-one. All right, so all of you actually ha- happened. Like, you, you're you knocked airborne. You're starting to fall, but you're all able to grab onto parts that are shooting from what used to be this path. And you're all just kind of hanging there, hoping to not fall and fall. <laughs> but when, what happens, unfortunately, is with the little shock from the bolt of the Airbuster going off, it happens to trigger your proximity sensor in your bomb on your on your chest there barbic and the oh, react reactor that you've recently escaped from also goes boom and shakes the entire platform again and you all fall and that's where we're going to end and that's where we're going to end it for the night i don't fall i flutter <laughs> oh yeah she can fly yeah, but you're in pain. You're in pain enough that you're like fluttering to slow your speed, but you're not keeping <laughs> maintaining air. Okay. You're 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 falling, but it, uh, you're falling with style. Paper, with style, we'll say. That's yeah, so that's what we're gonna call it, and we'll uh, pick this up next week. That's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ah. <sighs>